What do we have here? 35 kills. Okay, it's going to be uh, one of those matches. I'm just kidding. Or am I? <laughs> Look, we all started somewhere and they are apparently abandoning the spawn. Sweet. I don't know why so many people go down to that lower left island on this map, but they do. They always do. However, I will be playing the center and I will regale you with the tale of Marco Polo in its newly buffed state. For those of you who are newer, this was a campaign where you get... Is this guy go... Okay, speaking of... There's the copy pasta Marco Polo, the Centurion. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, right. This was a campaign where you got to choose the ship you got at the end. And it was between Marlboro and Marco Polo. Now, Marco Polo's claim to fame is a 1.9 Sigma, making it, and by extension, the copy pasta Centurion, the most accurate Italian battleships in the game. Which really isn't saying much since it still uses, what do they call it, European or continental dispersion. But it is more accurate than other Italian BBs, baby. And since it has 406s, they're also the largest Italian guns in the game currently. It's also the only battleship with sap shells with 106-ish millimeters of pin, I think. Now... Is it worth it? Well, prior to its reload buff, I generally say Nagata. And now, maybe. But I still don't think this ship is really a top tier competitor just yet. It's definitely getting close in my opinion. Of course, any shell over 280 millimeters that is AP or SAP will only ever do over pen damage to a destroyer, so yeah. There is still an argument to be made for keeping HE on it, but tuning this ship to be better against destroyers, well now you're just putting a round peg through a square hole, and when your sap connects, well, you know, most other ships will feel it, assuming your shells go where you aim, and you aim at the right place. But to aim the right place, you need spotting. And that doesn't work when you got, what, four ships sitting in one square in smoke? So, here we be, just waiting for somebody to spot for us and pinging my team away. Look, everybody's gone to the smoke on one side and what's going on behind us? So, wait a minute, everybody avoided that bottom left flank except for the Shima looking for that uh, 36th kill? Okay, whatever. I myself am going to be playing this center, as I said, and trying to set up a crossfire once those ships actually go around and spot what's on that northern side. So, uh, Yamato, which is looking quite beefy, I am going to try and get my AP shells into this. Uh, you will see me constantly switching back between SAP and AP. That is probably one of the big downsides of this is like, you kind of just got to go with what you have loaded. And I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what we would need? We need a commander who has a uh, an inspiration that will lower the reload of switching shells. Uh, kind of like, you know, some of the commanders actually have that skill, but it would be kind of nice if you could uh, have an inspiration for, you know, especially these well, Italian battleships, you know, well, this Italian <laughs> battleship, because you're always saddled with a, a longer reload, even though they did shave the three seconds off. But, you know, I want to get the right shell loaded most of the time. Then, wham. <laughs> Jerk is complaining because he can't have the right shell loaded all the time. I know, I know. Not ever. What if we had an Italian Azure Lane Dunkirk? Oh, that might be really good. Anyway, I'm using this smoke screen to traverse this pass here to try and rotate for more angles. Now, unlike the Tech Tree Italian ships where I generally use the smoke to close in and brawl, with Marco, I use it to stay undetected. And since Marco Polo doesn't get the goofy smoke firing the tech trees get, you should know, you'll be spotted out to 15 kilometers when you do fire. 
but I was going around the side of this rock and I'm trying to find a nice place for this sap to hit, but frankly, there just isn't one from this angle. Here is a real question though. Why do our Italian tech trees, and by extension, Columbo, get the absolutely bonkers 55, 70 pin angles and Marco doesn't? Marco has standard 45, 60 for its AP and the sap is 70, 80. So you get 10 more degrees of pin angles on sap, but short of light cruisers, you're not gonna be hitting any citadels. So even with this reload buff, the tech tree line is just better. But you know me, not really jerk. <laughs> well then listen up. I like weird boats and I cannot lie. So here I am in the land of the morning star. Now will somebody send me an angel? And I looked over there and I was like, that Stalingrad is looking pretty broadside. <laughs> and by extension, if I should make it around this corner, we should have a pretty good crossfire set up with our battleship that's still kind of back on our base. And ooh, there's also Savitsky Rossiya who's uh, sitting there broadside. So. Definitely want to have our AP ready. I am spotted. I think it's the uh, Shima up to the north keeping me spotted. So I'm expecting a full salvo here. And uh, yeah, we are going to get one. And yeah, it's not that bad. Could be worse, like uh, maybe a dev strike. Le bonk. <laughs> so yes, the AP does in fact still work on broadside Stalingrad. And... Do you suppose it can work on uh, broadside Savetsky Rossi? I mean, this is high velocity 406. It's got a lot of pin, so we shouldn't have much of a problem uh, doing a decent amount of damage here to Rossi if our shells actually hit. And eh, they do. You know, can't be too upset about that. But. Now I've earned the ire of a Drake out there, and that Drake is gonna, well, actually, I think the Drake shot me at the very beginning of the match, and they're gonna keep shooting me and shooting me, but I was popping my smoke here because I wasn't sure if the Centurion would be able to see my broadside. So now that I have a, a decent idea, like, look at this, we're like, well, our AP can't do anything. Let's switch over to the SAP, and we've gotta sit through the reload one more time. That's fine, we won't be spotted. That's what our smoke's here for. I'm trying to just get up to this island to uh, keep them broadside covered uh, and <laughs> wait for this SAP to reload. And here's something we will be able to do. We will be able to appreciate the sap on a fairly steeply angled Russian battleship. I mean, they are turned in a little bit. Yeah, see, we get spotted because uh, 15 kilometers, like I said, but... We do land a couple shells, and each uh, each sap shell at one third damage. That should be about 5k per sap shell that hits, so long as it's not a destroyer. And look at this. Now we've got another broadside battleship in front of us. So I don't have to worry about the Centurion. We know that there's a Shima up north. I'm quite concerned with the Z46 on our base because uh, they could actually cap out. What I don't know here. And maybe somebody can uh, figure it out by looking at the minimap. Is why is this Z46 spotted? He's got smoke. I don't. I didn't see anybody hit radar, but somehow he's still spotted here. No matter. I will take the shot, and because we have that accuracy, bonk, <laughs> one shell hits, and that's enough to take care of them. So at this point, I was like, well, I've never had. A Kraken in uh, Marco Polo before. <laughs> and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, maybe I should just ram this guy. <laughs> maybe I should just go around here and ram him. And I'm like, well, I mean, we're up so far. Okay, maybe I will actually just go around here and ram him. That sounds like a good plan. But my plans are going to be foiled because I'm going to get spotted. And I'm actually spotted by the Drake, is what it is. Uh, wisely. Drake's turning out, and uh, I'm like, ah, drats, foiled again. Well, we will just have to remove this Drake rather quickly because they, I seem to have caught their attention, and they are, like, really interested in shooting me with HE. Now, granted, I am probably the only thing they can shoot down here. Let's be real. But there will be times later where I'm like, hmm, 
not a fan or maybe they just want to see me. I don't know. Either way, as you know, Drake has a black hole armor where the shells go to die. Of course, I've got to actually hit it. Ooh, somebody did. I've got to actually hit it for those shells to uh, go into the black hole. Uh, as it were, I'm thinking, okay, this is probably about my chance to go if I want to ram this guy. And I'm not positive that I want to ram him still. I'm not positive exactly what I'm going to do until I have my smoke is ready now. I'd like to get one more heal off just in case I, you know, don't end up ramming. And I'm going to end up not ramming. So, you know, everybody, you can chillax and not be like, rams for Krakens. I only had to do that once or twice. <laughs> but no, what I'm actually doing here is I'm using my smoke again to be able to traverse this path. And so what I wanted to do was come around onto the broad side of the Centurion, but those plans are going to become foiled because the Shima gets spotted. And I'm like, well, I will shoot a Shima, especially when it's low, because that should pretty much guarantee us the win. Um, maybe I shouldn't have, but I, you know what? You just got to take that chance and shoot. But of course, my teammates get it, and now I'm spotted, but... That doesn't really matter either because the Centurion's guns are on the other side. So we will make it around here just fine. Just fine to come around broadside to a Drake. <laughs> this time, though, I will be the one on the receiving end of uh, being broadside. So check out this salvo from the Drake. I'm pretty sure they're using AP because I think we'll see that I get hit in the Citadel a couple times. A lot of people sleep on the Drake's AP. And... Plus, how awesome is it to see somebody out there playing a Drake? Yeah, look at that. Uh, 4,000, I think? Maybe maybe that's not Citadel shots. Either way, I'm coming around the broadside of this Centurion. And I was like, all right, got him. Nope. <laughs> Still no. I was like, well, I am dead now for certain. But my teammates get that yoink off probably for the best. I think that ended up saving me. And now I'm like, well, if we're going to do this. We're going to have to seek this Drake. How are we going to be able to do this? Well, they're still firing at me. We can get our heal off. And, of course, we get double fired because it's Drake. And now let's just take our time, aim these shots, and ex and expect the Drake's black hole armor. Yep. Looks about right. <laughs> so, <laughs> looks about right. But, at this point, the Drake is on the border. And... You know, I'm not going to uh, comment on that. We've all run into the border sometimes, and we've all used the border. Well, at least I know I've abused the border to uh, get shots off and try and make try and get more damage. So I'm not going to uh, belittle this player. Yeah, we get a very nice hit there, but you can tell that they're just uh, dragging along the border, which makes it very difficult for most people to be able to aim because if you use auto aim, it gets really jacked up when people are sliding on the border like this, but not for everybody as we are going to see that oh, big strong hit there. My shells are in the air as well. And this is actually going to be Kraken 456 in the Marco Polo. But how did we do XP wise? It feels like we did a lot, but the results say Nothing special. <laughs> so, GG's red team, GG's blue team, and let's see the commander. We are using Iachino. That's right. We're going for an accuracy build with this one, and that's going to wrap up our look at Marco.